So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a connection uh, and connect to uh, Snowflake and to Ponder. I'm passing the Ponder connection. And so when I do this, um, we go ahead and collect some metadata, uh, stage a table. It looks exactly like it does in Pandas, 15 million rows. Everything I'm showing in Snowflake today uh, also works on BigQuery. There's an order associated with your data frame, right? If you do df.head, you get the same rows every single time. In a database, that's not always true. But with Ponder, when you're operating on top of a data warehouse, that is true. We do guarantee that the same rows that you print for dot head will be the same rows every single time. A, a lot of like data frame operators or, or data frame APIs have a have a, an idea of a dot head, but not a lot of them do tail because not a lot of them are actually ordered. Since we have these, these like core abstractions that allow us to represent things ordered, we can do that in the data warehouse as well. Okay, so we can even do things like grab row nine through 99. Now, now in a database, what's row nine mean? <laughs> that doesn't really mean anything in a database or data warehouse. In a data frame, it does. And so if I've ordered by something and I want to grab a, a slice out of it, I can't. Um, the same with rows and columns. I can do I can do something like grab a little square out or something like that. Same semantics, same exact behavior as pandas. Okay, and to talk a little bit more about order and about how we track order, I'm going to create this DF sorted. And I, I also do want to call attention to how snappy this is because this is this is quite snappy, right? I'm I'm in the Midwest, my data warehouse is on the West Coast, and it's the only amount of data that it's fetching from the data warehouse is just what we can print. Um, and and so yeah, it's it's very, very fast, as you can tell. All the caching happens at the at the data warehouse side, basically. We're not um, pulling any data out to do any in-memory operations or anything. It's gonna be fast. We support multi-index, we support index, uh, and you can see here that we just set the index just like any other, just like you would in pandas. There are also ordered ordered versions of relational operators. So a lot of operators in pandas have SQL operators in them, but there's also some kind of assumptions or order assumptions that, that go into these. These are built into our internal data model. If you have an assumption in pandas, then you can have that assumption with ponder. So, okay, concat. Concat is union in a database. Everyone can imagine how to do a union or a union all, um, but in pandas, the union is actually ordered. So it, it stacks the second table below the first table. One hand encoding is something, get dummies, it's something that you really frequently want to do as pre-processing. You take a, I'm going to go ahead and run it. Uh, you take a, uh, a column that's a categorical or a string, and we have basically elevated data into the metadata. So I used to have automobile, and now that now I have C market, uh, C market segment on automobile. I printed my numeric data frame, and now I can do something like min-max normalization. Now, min-max normalization in SQL is incredibly complex. I challenge anyone here to do it in less than 200 lines. But with pandas, because pandas is just so, such a powerful language, I can just type it like this and ponder handles, handles everything. And it's all pushed down into the data warehouse. A lot of times you have data that's a CSV that maybe you want to join in the data warehouse. With pandas, you would pull the data out of the data warehouse. With ponder, you can actually push the data into the data warehouse. So what we do is we determine the schema for you. We go ahead and stage that table. We upload the data into, uh, into Snowflake or BigQuery. And then it's just there as a temporary table that you can interact with. So I have this DFCSV, but everything I do with DFCSV is going to be in the data warehouse. Okay, so date time and date time index. So uh, I started, I had my data that started as a CSV. As it would in pandas, it created it as an object data type. Uh, and now my data types aren't right, right? Because I want my, my date to be a date time column. So just like in pandas, I can overwrite that column with two date time. There's like no visible difference to how, how you would interact with this, even if you just want to look at what the, the dates. So now I want to do a resample. And I want to resample based on every, every four weeks, I want to get the average total price. But in this case, uh, it printed as a series. I don't really like that. So I can go ahead and print it as a data frame. Um, and I'll show you here, I've added to NumPy. It looks exactly the same. All of these operations are going to be pushed down. So uh, I'm going to create this array ARR. If we can do a transpose in a data frame and push it down, we can do a transpose in an array and push it down. And then there are things that you that aren't you know, native in pandas that we can also do. Um, hyperbolic tangent is one thing. So we can compute this. And when we print, it looks exactly like a NumPy array. This is just the same data and it's still housed in Snowflake. The kind of modern data stack is very SQL centric. And, and I think what's been missing is a way to kind of have the folks who really, really like SQL and the folks who really, really like pandas to kind of 
communicate <laughs> in a way that makes sense and to operate on the same source of truth. How, how ridiculous is it that like if I change from one data warehouse to another, I have to change my SQL statement. Or if I want to use Spark, right, I have to pull the data out and put it somewhere else. And then after I'm done, I just push it right back. What we're building is actually a way for folks to like stick with stick with the APIs that they want to use and just have it run on whatever is most cost efficient for the company or whatever the company ch chooses to use for compliance or for security reasons or, or whatever, and have all of the benefits of, of these data warehouses available to Python users. If you have not signed up for the product, you're really missing out.